So I've really been enjoying these motion graphics tutorials and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this ducky in a little pool and he's bobbing up and down. So we're going to be making everything you see here except the ducky. We're going to be downloading the ducky online for free. I'm going to show you where you can find him. And uh, it's just a fun little tutorial. I think the result here looks great. It was a ton of fun to make and uh, I'd like to see what you guys do. So you can join um, the Discord below or you can also go to my Instagram and follow me there. Check that out. And as always, this file will be on my Patreon as well, which you can join in the description. Joining Patreon really helps me make more content. It's a way to support the channel. And um, if you want to check that out, you can. And also you can use my link in the description below if you want to join Skillshare for free for one month. And on my Skillshare, I have a lot of cool Blender courses um, that are a little bit more advanced, but they're in depth and they take you through a lot of different aspects of creating characters and things like that. So let's jump in and I hope you guys enjoy this uh, little uh, ducky animation tutorial. Okay, so we have a new scene open up in Blender. I'm just gonna select all the default objects and as always, I'm just gonna press delete. We now have a nice clean scene to work with. And to get started, we're gonna make our little uh, swimming pool. So we're gonna go shift A under our mesh options. Let's add in a circle. And with the circle here, we're gonna to go to our add circle settings and let's give it some more resolution. We're gonna go with about 120, I think should be fine. Close this little box and let's tab into edit mode. And with all of this active, we're just gonna go E to extrude and Z and let's go up about this much, okay? Roughly, you can eye it, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and because we're gonna cut kind of like the top of this off anyway. And then we're gonna go ahead and press F. It's gonna fill this and let's select the bottom row and go F and fill that as well. One important thing, we want to go over down to our viewport overlays. Let's just enable the normals here. And you're gonna see we don't see normals. That's an issue because later it's gonna mess up our shading. So we're gonna press A to select everything and Alt N and let's just go ahead and flip those normals. Okay, so we want all of the normals to be pointing outwards correctly before we get into any bad um, situations. So let's tab back out. We're gonna right click and go auto shade smooth. And now we want to be able to displace the top here. And we don't want to do an actual water simulation. So what we're going to do is a little cheat. We're going to go shift A. We're going to go just add in any object. It could be the monkey head. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as you have it in here, you can go over to your modifiers, add modifier, and let's give it a ocean. And it just suddenly turns it all into an ocean. And what we're going to do, we're going to go S to scale down this ocean about this much. We're going to go G, Z, and move it up to about here. And then we're gonna go over here to our ocean settings and we're gonna go over to the waves. Let's increase that scale for a start. And I think that's looking pretty good. And uh, we want this to actually be animated, otherwise it doesn't do us any good, right? So if we actually hit the space bar now, you can see it doesn't move. So what we need to do is come here to this time value. So let's come to frame one. And with the time here, it's currently set to one. So let's just click on this little um, all animate prop property and it's going to give it a keyframe. You can see it turns yellow. Here we have a little keyframe to indicate. And let's go to 250 and on 250, uh, let's take it and I'm going to look what I did for my original quickly. Um, let me quickly just see so we're 100% sure here. Okay, so we're going to go and make the time here um, 23 on 250. So we're in frame 250 and we made it 23. And once again, click on this animate property. So we have a keyframe. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, um, we should see something that has some nice timing. Now, um, it has a Bezier curve on the animation. We don't want that because we want it to be linear. So let's just grab these keyframes. Let's just press T over here and make it linear. So now it doesn't start slow and speed up and the other way around. We want it just to be a linear animation. So you can see here, um, that's a nice steady speed. I think it works really good. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually, to be able to use this as a Boolean operator, uh, we have to go and give it another modifier and that's going to be a solidify. And uh, let's take that thickness like so, okay? Just so it covers everything like this. And you can see now we have this and it looks a bit weird, but what we can do now is select our water tank here, so to speak, go to our modifiers for that, give it a Boolean and then click on this little eyedropper and select this. And let's just um, also make it fast under the solver. Now we're gonna grab this cutter object and go M and we're gonna move it to a new collection. Let's just call it cutter and go okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn it off in the viewport and also turn it off for the render. We don't want it to render. So now we have this nicely animated water and no water simulations required, okay? It's very efficient. Um, so let's now go shift a, let's just add in a circle quickly again. Um, tab into edit mode, just S to scale it up a little bit. 
And let's go E to extrude and Z and extrude it up. Take it a little bit higher so it's just kind of containing all of the water, like so. And once again, let's just check those normals. Um, you can see we don't see them, so let's press A to select everything, Alt N, recalculate outside. And let's tab back out. Let's quickly give this guy a solidify and bring it out like this a little bit. And let's go right click and go shade smooth auto smoothing. And now we have this sort of tank here looking pretty cool. Now we're going to go shift A. Let's add in a plane. G, Z and move it up and S to scale it down about this much. Control A and apply that scale. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode and with everything active, you're gonna right click, click on subdivide and let's go to our subdivision here. Let's give it about five subdivisions. Perfect. Now we're gonna tab back out and let's go give this under our modifiers. Let's give this a wireframe. Well, not a wireframe, a, um, where is that little thing? The shrink wrap, we're gonna give it a shrink wrap modifier. Click on the eyedropper and select the water surface here. And let's go to warp method and let's make it project. And we also want to go ahead and click here on negative. Um, I explained in my video where I did the boat bobbing on the water why that is. It's just got to do with um, where it is on this sort of axis here. The, so if it's higher than the negative, then it won't initiate if it's lower than the positive. So that's kind of why we have to initiate that because it's over here. So for example, we had this thing all the way down here at the bottom. If we didn't have positive enabled, it wouldn't work the other way either. So you kind of, um, if that makes sense. So that's why we wanna enable negative, okay? So anyway, the long story short is now we have this thing um, kind of on the water here projected, which is really cool. Um, but one thing we wanna do is just quickly go over to our object data properties, um, or at least our object properties, go to the viewport display, and let's go to the display as, let's just make it wire. Let's go over here to the visibility and turn off render, okay? Because we don't want to see that in the render. But what we do want to do now is we want to get our little ducky. So let's go over to the internet. I'm going to use Sketchfab. Now, by the way, Sketchfab is free. So you can create an account. It's not going to cost you money. It's worth your time because there are tens of thousands of assets on here. And you're going to go type in rubber ducky. And I found one that I like. So I'm going to go with this one here. I'll put a link to him in the description. And Full um, credit to this individual here, Xavier Garcia, for making this little rubber ducky. And you can see here the usage rights, as long as you give attribution and a link in the description, you are indeed allowed to use this, um, even for um, commercial purposes, as long as you remix or transform or build upon the material. So we're completely within the rights to use this. You're going to go ahead and download the 3D model, which I've already done. And what you're going to do is so in my case, that's in my downloads. It's a cartoon rubber ducky. So I'm gonna go ahead and just extract it like so. So now there is a file in here with a source. Let's click on a source and inside of there is another um, file. So I'm just gonna extract that as well. And in there should be a um, OBJ. So let's go to properties. You can see it's an OBJ file. And in there are some textures. So let's just go into Blender and I'll quickly show you how we bring this in. So we're gonna to go to File, we're gonna to go to Import, we're gonna go um, OBJ. In my case, that's in my downloads, Cartoon Rubber Ducky, click on the source, and inside of there is the duck, and go into that folder and then click on Duck OBJ. And you can see it's massive, so we're gonna go ahead and scale him down. And then we're gonna go Control A and just apply that scale, and then G, Z, move him up, and just place him kind of in the water, a little bit submerged like this. Now if we go Z and we go Material Preview, we're gonna see it doesn't have any materials, so we're just gonna to go to our shading. Um, let's just actually, um, let's just get rid of this principal shader in here and go Shift A, search and get another principal. And there's a reason I'm doing that because sometimes the settings can be a little bit messed up. And now we're gonna grab this base color and just drag on it. So drag on a base color, image texture, you're gonna type it in. Click on open, and in this case, I'm just gonna to go to my downloads where that is, go inside a folder, go to the textures, and then get the um, color map here. You can also go ahead and duplicate this, and then go ahead and find the normal map as well. Plug it into the normal here, shift A, search and get a normal map. Place it over here, make sure it goes into the color, Give it a strength of like 
make sure to make it a non-color data and then also duplicate it if you wish and maybe get the roughness. Um, spend as much time as you want setting up these materials here. I'm just gonna keep it simple. Once again, non-color. Um, so just these free maps, but you could just kind of leave it to just the color if you want to. I think it looks fine. We're now gonna go back to our layout. We're gonna go um, Control S just to save. And now with this duck key to right scale, let's grab him and let's go over to our constraints. Let's go to add object constraints and let's get a copy location. Let's click on this eyedropper and now let's select that, um, that plane that we added in. So the object plane, as you should see over here, it now says plane. And then what we need to do is give it a group to look at. So we're gonna select this um, plane that we added in. We're gonna tab into edit mode and let's go over to the object data properties, create a vertex group. And with all of this active, we're gonna go ahead and assign it to that group. Tab back out, select the duck key, and then go back to the constraints. And then under the vertex group, let's select that group. So what you might have to do is just tab into edit mode, press A to select all of the mesh, go G, Z, and just move it down till it's kind of embedded a little bit in the water. So now if we hit the spacebar, you're gonna see the duck is bobbing up and down. Now another thing we're gonna do quickly, and this is optional, but you can select the duck and you can go to frame one, enable auto keying. And what I like to do is just kind of look at the water and then slightly just rotate it with the auto king. And the reason I'm doing this and not using a generator is because I want it to kind of match the waves here. So I'm gonna kind of look at the direction of things and then kind of bob it based on how I think it should look, based on how the water is. And this is gonna be different for you based on how you have things set up. So over here, it kind of sinks a little bit, might make them go forward and to the side. And I'm just looking at the direction of the water and seeing how it might tilt the duck you know, back and forth and just kind of buying it a little bit with that auto keying turned on and yeah, just working through it like this. And I'm gonna turn that off now. And now you can see it kind of really looks like the duck is kind of bobbing around in that water because of that little extra step. But that's kind of optional. The main idea here is we now have this cool looking effect of the duck floating. So let's go control S to save. Shift A, let's add in a circle again. Um, let's tab into edit mode, S to scale it a little bit. Let's go E to extrude, S to scale, like so. And let's make it, I say probably about this big, maybe scale it down a bit. E to extrude and Z, let's extrude up a little bit to create a wall and then E to extrude and S to scale and scale it out like so. Okay, there we have that. We're gonna tab back out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, let's add in under the mesh options, a torus, go G, Z, move it up. Tab into edit mode and go Alt, S and scale it in along the normals. G, Z, move it up and maybe Alt, S again, just to scale it. This is gonna make kind of like this rim here and we're gonna go G, Z, move it down to the top. This is optional, but I think it just adds a nice little touch. And then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate. We're gonna go S to scale it up. And then we're gonna go Alt S again and just kind of make it a little bit skinnier. And then we're gonna go G, Z and move it down a little bit, like so. We're gonna tab back out, right click, go Shade Smooth, and let's give this a subdivision surface modifier under the modifiers. Okay, that's gonna kind of be like this railing around a pool. And let's quickly go into our front orthographic view. And we're gonna go Shift A, let's add in a circle. Under the Add Circle settings, let's just make it something like 12, don't want to go too high and let's just go G and move it over here to the end. And in our front orthographic, we're going to scale that guy down and maybe bring it down a bit. And then we're going to tab into edit mode. Just grab that guy and extrude him up and then extrude again and then S to scale. And then from here, I'm just going to go extrude, rotate, extrude, rotate. And yes, you could use the spin tool. I just couldn't be bothered right now. We go E to extrude, R to rotate, E to extrude, till it touches this railing over here, like that. And um, maybe just grab this bottom here and go F to fill that. And then we're gonna go, maybe give it a little bit of bevel. Maybe grab this edge here and go Shift B. This is optional, just a little thing like this. Tab back out and let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. Right click and go Shade Smooth. So now we have this thing here and that's gonna hold the railing. And with our cursor still in the center here our, of our world, we can just grab this guy and go to our um, transform pivot, make it 3D cursor. And in that top view, we're gonna go Shift D, R, 
four five, so 45 degrees, and then press enter. And then just shift R to repeat that till it goes all the way around to over here. So just duplicated it around the axis and let's go back here and change this to median point again. So now we have this thing set up over here and it just kind of looks really cool. Okay, make sure to save as we go. And now we're gonna grab this floor here. We're gonna tab into edit mode and I'm just gonna go and select just this bottom bit here and go P and separate that selection. So it's its own object. And of this guy, we're gonna go ahead and go to our particles. Let's go plus, give it a hair, make it advanced. Let's make it 300 on the number. And under the children, we're gonna make it interpolated. And let's actually go down to the roughness and let's increase it a little bit. And let's increase the end point here to give it some roughness. And at the very top as well, we wanna to go to the hair length and just bring that down. And you can bring it down to whatever you want. I'm gonna go something like that. I don't wanna make it too high, maybe a little bit higher. Okay, now we have some nice hair over here. And another thing you could do is probably select this hoop over here. This is another thing I did. I just selected this main hoop and I went Shift D to duplicate, S to scale it up nice and big, and then G, Z, and I kind of brought it to the corner over here, as you can see, and then brought it down. And then I went Alt S just to make it a bit skinnier scale it up and that's just kind of added this nice border and uh, that's optional but I think it kind of looks cool if you want to do something like that um, but that's kind of done now let's actually with this grass selected go to our materials and go new and let's just create a material for now called grass we'll work on it a little bit later and another thing we want to do is actually go over to the internet and I'm going to put a link in the description below to this material here on Polyhaven, all you have to do is download the blend file. And in your downloads, you're gonna see um, this square concrete pavers. You're gonna actually go ahead and extract that zip folder. And it's gonna create a zip folder here, or a folder with a blend file in it, okay? Called square concrete pavers. And inside of your blend file, you're simply gonna go file, append, and then go to wherever that's downloaded to. So here it is. Click on that blend file, go to your material, click on the square concrete pavers and go append. And then you can select the ground here, the floor, go to your materials, come to the drop down, and give it that square concrete pavers. And then all you have to do is go to your UV editing, Z and then go material preview. And then press A to select all of this and then go U and unwrap. Okay, and here you can see it's unwrapped. Now this is not looking quite the way I want it to do. At the top is, but I wanna do the one here in the inside differently. So I'm gonna shift alt left click in the inside here to select that. And I'm gonna go U and I'm gonna go, um, let's go with smart UV project and go okay. And let's go Z, let's go material preview. And that's looking a lot better. I just wanna grab them though and scale them a little bit down. So the pavers are the right size. And I'm just going to go ahead and also select this top bit and scale that till over here, till everything matches what I'm looking for. So I'm going to scale it up. Um, spend as much time as you want on this. I'm going to just do it till it all kind of matches like that. Okay, so now we have these kind of pavers around here. Um, for my original, I, did a, I spent a little bit more time with the UV unwrapping and we kind of moved things around to make it look a bit better. But... This is kind of what I'm going to go with for now, okay? Just for the tutorial's sake. And let's then go back to our layout. And now we're going to go over to our render settings. I'm going to change this to cycles. And let's go over to our render uh, max samples, make it something like 50 or 60. I'm going to go with 60. And let's now select this railing here. Go to our materials, go new. Let's just call it brass. And let's make it kind of like a brassy kind of color, make it metallic. And then under the roughness slider, let's bring that value down to a lower number. Now let's grab this part over here, these guys. I'm just holding in shift, selecting them, these little holders. And I'm just gonna hold in shift and select the railing here and go Control L and just link those materials. So now they also have that material. So if you go rendered, 
you can see those all have that metal material. So for now, let's just go shift A as well and just add in a light. Let's make it an area light and move it up. Let's go to our light settings and make it 1000 on the strength. And now let's go Z and go render it and let's see what this looks like. So let's make the size two meters. And let's go to our right view, offer graphic view and move it over here like so. Then go to our top view and then go shift D to duplicate, rotate it in from the back. And now we have some lighting. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually select this outer shell, the glass. We're gonna go over and give it a new material. This is called glass. And let's go over down and let's give it a transmission of one. Let's go to its roughness and bring it all the way down to zero. And let's go to the base color and drag that value all the way up to one. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see it is now a transparent thing. But we also wanna select our water here. Go new, create a material called water. And we wanna give it a base color that's slightly bluish. We wanna bring down the roughness all the way. And we wanna go down to the transmission, make it one. And now if we go Z and we go render it, we can see we have this liquid over here. Okay, kind of cool. But we want the surface to look even better. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go into our shading workspace. And we're gonna actually come over here to our scene collection. And remember we created that cutter object and we put it on a collection called cutter. We wanna actually enable that and then select the cutter object. We wanna go over to the materials and create a new material. And let's call this water as well. And we're gonna call it water two. And let's give it a base color and kind of give it that same kind of bluish material bring down the roughness all the way, give it a transmission of one. And let's now go ahead and hide it again and then select the water, go over to our materials, click plus, and then in the dropdown, give it that water too. And now what's gonna happen, if we actually grab that water too and we go down to the viewport display and just give this a temporary different color, you can see that it's actually only it's giving now that same, um, so if I just hide the glass here, you can see it has the first water material here on the side and at the top, it is now using the water two material. And the reason we're doing that is we're now gonna take this water two material, we're gonna come over here, oops, just make sure the water is selected and with the water two material, we're gonna go shift A search and get a wave texture. We're gonna plug the color into the normal. Shift A, search and get a color ramp node. Shift A, search and get a bump node. Place it over here and make sure it's going into the height. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we're gonna see we have these waves over here, but we wanna actually go to the distortion and increase it. And we wanna to go to the size, the scale and increase it a bit as well. And we wanna to go to the detail and increase it a little bit. And then under the strength here, we wanna bring it way down. Okay, just so we have a slight kind of rippling happening in the water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to come to the phase offset and we're gonna animate that as well. So um, let's just for now drag the color output here into the surface, go Z and let's go material preview, just so we can see the waves here. And let's come over into frame one. And frame one, we're gonna go ahead and hovering over here, hit I to insert a keyframe. And then we're gonna go to the end frame value. And on the end frame, we're gonna go ahead and drag this phase a little bit. So let's go with something like 19 and then press I again. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, you can see these ripples are also animating a little bit, okay? And you can uh, mess around with that as much as you want. I just think that kind of looks cool. You can mess around with these sliders over here, um, give them different values. But that's what I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna drag this back into the surface here. And now we have some detail on the surface of the water, which I think looks really cool. So one more thing you can do is go to the internet, go to your browser and just type in grass and then go to your images and just download an image of some grass. I'm just gonna grab any one that I can find. I'm just gonna drag it onto my desktop. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into Blender. 
And with this grass floor here, we're gonna grab it and just grab the base color here and drag, type an image and get an image texture, click on open, and then get whatever grass image you have. And now if you go Z and you go render it, you're gonna see it's using that um, grass material. Just make sure of course, you go into edit mode and you go U and you go unwrap. Okay, so it has that UV data there, but there we have some nice grass. Now we're gonna go into our layout and let's go shift A, add in a camera. I'm gonna just move my camera up like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change my camera to an orthographic. And at this point you'd have to use the orthographic scale to zoom in and out, but I'm just gonna go something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate my camera and move it like so, so I have an angle that I like. And I think I'm happy with that. And now I'm gonna go um, Control B and just drag over my camera just to limit the rendering to the camera. And let's go render and render image and let's see what this looks like. Okay, so here you can see is the render and it can really do with some environmental lighting to help with this um, water here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our world um, properties. We're gonna go to the color and let's give it a sky texture for now. Let's go Z and let's go rendered. And now you can see it looks a lot better, but what I'm gonna do is take the strength down to 0.7 or something a little bit lower. And now let's go ahead and render and let's see what it looks like. And here we have it guys, that is the final render. I think this is looking pretty good, okay? So um, this is um, pretty close to actually my original. In fact, I think this one looks a little bit better in some ways. I really like the way the lighting came out and um, this might actually be better than my original. I might actually make this the Patreon example, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I put a lot of effort into this and if it really helps you out and you appreciate it, um, definitely like some of my other stuff, maybe support me on Patreon. And you can even check out my other channel called Pixo Balloons, where I do some other different kinds of content and check that out. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.